Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So yesterday we just did this video over on Patreon. This was a Patreon exclusive, uh, which is something we've been doing at least twice a week. And there's a lot to this agenda that's underway. And, and the reality is it can be very, very, very hard to face exactly what's going on. It's, it's not easy uh, to understand the bigger picture. No, it's not. We do our best to help paint it. <laughs> Absolutely. And then uh, we've been also getting ourselves as situated as possible as we have at least 50 or 60, maybe 70 plants to get into the ground, including we've rounded up nine pomegranate trees as I love pomegranates and pomegranates are so good for you. And yes, all these things are going to take a little while uh, to bloom and blossom. But now is the time to be planting things that uh, are going to help you to be as self-sufficient as possible. And of course, we recognize that if you're on top of a or somewhere in a skyscraper in an apartment, then you know, obviously you're not going to be planting trees everywhere. We all have our big decisions to make in these times. What I want to get across is the fact that we obviously understand that Texas fires, Maui, Lahaina fires, uh, East Palestine with the controlled, quote unquote, explosion, uh, hundreds of train derailments, all sorts of uh, food production facilities and warehouses all been going up in flames all around the United States. I want to just stress that it's also happening over in Russia and it's happening in China. Too. It's happening all over the globe. This is the big thing that I want to get across because it is it is easy. And sometimes uh, people maybe um, just pop into the channel. And yeah, you know, again, if we recapped every single nuance of everything that's going on, uh, at the beginning of every video, every video is going to be hours long. And, of course, people would love brief videos, but then you don't get all the details. And if you only just popped in for the first or second time, you might think uh, that we're saying, you know, the Chinese people or, or the Russian people are at fault in this. No, there's one global system that manipulates all of us. And here, this is a major fire in Moscow. This is big. This is Moscow. Can you imagine if we saw this in New York City or L.A. or Chicago? Yeah, this is going to get a lot of attention. Moscow is actually bigger than any of those cities. And here you go. 20 fire trucks, several police cars were present. 4,000 square meters on fire, over 130 specialists dispatched to the scenes along with two helicopters that dropped 15 tons of water. This was right by the airport metro station in the city's southwest area. And then you jump over here and you got a big major fire going on in St. Petersburg. You know, St. Petersburg and Moscow are the two largest cities in Russia. It's not just us, and it's not just the NATO um, countries. Although I would say with the immigration thing, yeah, yeah, it's primarily the NATO countries, um, the United States and those allied, that they're shifting people into the area. This caused all civilian air operations to be halted in the area. That's huge. Can you imagine? Again, all the flights in, in L.A., let's say the number two city in the U.S. as far as size all of a sudden canceled. We would take note. Well, it is happening over there, too. Yes, it is. I mean, it, it's going on everywhere. And uh, what, what do you do? You know, I just keep having to say over and over like a broken record, make sure you're self-sufficient because those that say they are going to come to the rescue that are taking all of our tax dollars that are saying, oh, yeah, don't worry, this is going to go right back into the system that you utilize. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> it's going elsewhere. So we have to get ready. And, um, you know, just a note on the the, the fruit trees that we're going to be putting in. Um, look to your local agriculture department because they can do things like test your soil and tell you what you might need to be amending with so that you have a good produce because you might plant a tree and get nothing for three or four years because your soil is missing in calcium. So you can avoid some of those things by learning to do that. Absolutely. And so after being, you know, situated in one area, we, we ended up, um, the guides basically gave us the info that, you know, it's, it's not optimal. So we, we ended up 
moving a little bit closer to a more agricultural area where we are surrounded by by family farms, by ranchers. Um, we could walk and go get eggs from a local person. It's that close. They have tons of <laughs> chickens, so we don't have to. Um, at the same time, you know, I understand everybody's in a different position. Just, just letting you guys know what our mindset is as you look at this massive fire. Where's this? This is in Colombia. Colombia, South America, Cartagena. Uh, this is a major port. Actually, it's a major stop for uh, cruise lines as well. But it's all of us that are being under attack by the system. And the system wants to control what you put in your mouth. It wants to control all the food you eat. It wants to control your ability to get good, healthy food. There's a reason. It should be, really, <clears throat> that organic food should be what we call conventional. <clears throat> and conventional, we should designate as not or not organic, just that simple. Hey, this is not organic. It's sprayed with pesticides that, in most cases, have been shown that they can overload your system and cause cancer and all sorts of health problems. The system wants us totally dependent on the system. The system is attacking all of us as as long as we keep you know having such a high percentage of people that take sides and and you know hey we're pro ukraine hey we're pro russia hey we're pro this hey we're pro that uh let's just be pro humanity pro human pro the planet in general and no not with their fake agendas because yeah obviously what what they've done is they get us focusing on, you know, say the climate change agenda, and they still have their little wikis out for that. And, you know, more and more people have just on a side note are really waking up to the reptilian presence on the planet. As I see more and more videos all the time coming up from these new channels that are exposing uh, the reptilian agenda. And of course, they still have those little reptilian wikis. If the whole concept of reptilian overlords, reptilian extraterrestrial interdimensional beings is just so preposterous, so ridiculous that it's absolutely laughable, why are they taking the time to put little Wikipedias up there? I mean, that shows you how stupid AI really is in so many ways. AI has no... It, it's just an it's all about algorithms it, it has no no feelings it, it, it doesn't have our intuitiveness it has no sensitivity to energies all it knows is how to crunch numbers and this is exactly what uh, the political leadership of the planet is really entrusting everything to uh, an AI system ultimately that really uh, has no heart has no emotions now, the ones right below it, oh, they have emotions, but, but those emotions are those of a stone-cold serial killer when you get down to it. Um, uh, the, the emotions of a hungry alligator or a crocodile just simply all-consuming um, desire to control and to uh, rule really and this is what is going on here on a massive level so we have to realize as long as we 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 take aim at any one uh group of people whether it's an arbitrary country border which is always changing uh whether it's any sort of ethnicity or anything then then we're still falling sway with their their bigger plans and still coming under their ability to manipulate us Absolutely, you know, there's uh, the left-right dichotomy going on geopolitically, and yeah, absolutely, when you when you look at it, it's pretty obvious uh, who's left the door open so that we could be invaded, per se, um, but it, there are people on both sides that have left that door open, even if it's one side that has maybe uh, kicked it open a little bit larger than the other side. Again, you look to people that have been in place forever, like Lindsey Graham, who wants to start a war everywhere, you know, and so many other career politicians, just like in, in Rome, in the ancient Roman Senate, they feel just like the banking uh, cabal and certain families like the Rockefellers and the Red Shields, it it's their their blood right to rule over us is what they they feel of course they're they're nothing but slaves themselves 
Meanwhile, Polish foreign minister backs sending NATO troops to Ukraine. So you have Poland and you have France that are talking about, you know, escalating. They, they understand the bigger picture. They really do. It, it's, it's not about, quote unquote, stopping Russia. It, it's about annihilating and wiping out the old system so they can put the new in place. Mm -hmm. That's definitely what they want to do. And they're they're putting the new system in place, like right under our noses when we're not really paying attention. They're putting in all these new laws and they've admitted to it. They're the 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 goal is is to put in all these new laws and then basically void all of the old laws. So they're tying these uh, pieces together little by little and they're very strategic about it. And whenever you want to get anything done in this world and if there's an enemy involved, you have to look to see what your enemy is doing and then in a way mirror that. So what am I saying? No, you don't want to be a, a butthead. You don't want to be like them. But if they're being very strategic and uh, working in lockstep with one another, then we need to be strategic and work with in lockstep with one another on on the light side of things. I hope I explained that right. Yes, absolutely. And Haiti is in complete anarchy. Yes. Now, anarchy could be a good thing in some ways because anarchy means without any central control. But of course, it's always pictured in a bad light because, again, central control is what keeps the, the masses controlled by the few and keeps the system in place. But here you have gangs taking control. You have literal bodies in the street uh, being eaten by dogs. I mean, this is what's going on right there. It's, it's total chaos. And the situation in Haiti, um, this person saying is Chicago next. Well, it, it could be anywhere in the near future when you have those sleepy cellular units given the go, which um, we talked about at length in a video that I probably did a really bad job in titling um, because I do feel it was one of the most important videos we've we've done to date. And that was um, the video that we did, I believe, on uh, EE Arts. And we were talking about a possible timeline because I do feel that, you know, there's it depends on where, where we're at. Obviously, if you're way out in the country, if you're out in the sticks, um, you know, things might not change as much for you as it is going to change for, for, for people that are, are in the, the bigger cities um, and in certain areas, too. So uh, the one I'm talking about, it's, it's entitled World War Three Sleeper Activation, Civil War, Great Quakes, Islamic Invasion, Comet, etc. Uh, a possible timeline. And that was on EE Arts. That's the last one we did over there two days ago. Um, it was 47 minutes long, but I think it covered a lot of things. And as I'm doing that video, the more I become feeling uh, pretty convinced that, you know, it's not likely that we have an extra year to prep. I, I do think it's coming this year. I think that it's we could see the signs, you know, it's coming to us this year if we are here in the United States, in, in the UK, um, in, in the NATO countries, in Europe, um, it's, it's probably going to be knocking at our door in some way, shape, or form. I don't think they could keep these, uh, all these people under wraps without chaos, you know, coming out in, into a greater degree. When you look at the gangs, well, yeah, there's random gangs, and then there's organized crime. And there's cartels and and we you know, so many people are aware of that fact but then when you realize that a lot of these um, organized crime and cartels they they do work with uh, governmental agencies they do get cues on things you know uh, on on what to hit and 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 this is part of a big reveal it's fairly well known that our own government in the U.S. has had dealings with the mafia, the mafioso. Yes, absolutely. And it still goes on. So there is an organized chaos to all this. And we don't dare show the rest of this video. Um, you know, it, it's not good. And here you have the president of um, Salvador, El Salvador, who has done a pretty impressive job, uh, albeit controversial, uh, you know, in f 
getting rid of the the crime, the the horrible crime that was in El Salvador. He has done a, a, an impressive job because El Salvador has gone from being one of the most dangerous countries in the Western Hemisphere to one of the safest, which is is pretty wild in a relatively short time. I think he took power in 2019 or 2020. And he's offering to help if if others will pay for the help, you know, he'll help them uh, with Haiti. And of course, there is also the thought and people have brought up the fact that the U.S. may send troops in over there. Um, You know, we're very, very close uh, because if if we're sending troops everywhere and we have our own National Guard abroad all the time, ever since 9-11, we've had National Guard stationed over in the Middle East. National Guard. National Guard's supposed to be National Guard. They're doing everything they can to send them to uh, areas where they're not going to be home to protect the people that need them at home. Mm Mm-mm. No, it's uh, that that to me has really smelled horrible from the very, very beginning where they're l- kind of gathering people into Texas. I just I keep seeing the Twin Towers and what happened to them. It was so horrible because they went up in flames and all of these men and women who want to rescue, they all went in there and, and look what happened. I mean, they were going to do the the best thing that anyone could ever do and help, help try to help save a life and look what they did so these are your controllers at work and you know if you ever need to question what are they capable of just keep that in mind keep that in mind that this is what they are capable of and they planned it out step by step and they planned it out years in advance so i think it's always a good idea to understand uh, what kind of an energy you're up against. I, I don't like to use the word enemy. I'm not sure why I haven't figured that out. But e- energy is energy. And you really need to know what you're dealing with to combat that energy. If you don't like it in your energy field, there's a way to get away from it. But you do have to know what it is at least. There is a series. And so this series came out in 2019. It was a television series. Um and it was a remake of The War of the Worlds set in contemporary France. I- interestingly enough, what do we see in the series? Cyborg dogs. Cyborg, cyborg dogs that go around killing humans. And the question is, is, is this aliens? Is this aliens doing this with the cyborg dogs? It turns out it's humans. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we know these are a reality. Israel's been buying these from an American company called Ghost Robotics to help them uh, go into Gaza. Absolutely, as you can see them. 165000 each. These things are in Gaza. I have seen these things with lasers mounted as well as machine guns, like fifty caliber machine guns mounted. Uh, they could be just mounted with cameras, too. And, yeah, absolutely. Other things as well, like these quadcopters. You know, I didn't understand at all when the guides gave me a vision back in uh, 83 of things like this and of what I took to be eyes just following people around everywhere watching everybody's move in cities. Well, with all the drones and robotics, now it's it's not hard to understand. They always kind of tell us what's coming next, as you will find there will be less and less humans involved in any sort of military operations. There will be more and more of these guys and worse involved in the military operations because humans are going to be waking up. Uh, This is entitled Absolutely Unbelievable. This is why you shouldn't trust any government. After World War II, the British government decided to randomly drop a nuclear bomb very close to 20,000 British soldiers just to see what would happen as far as radiation sickness. And we covered a lot of other things on that Patreon-only video. You'd be amazed how much of that has happened over the years. And we have family members that were um, right next to nuclear areas and that, that did suffer consequences in, in uh, you know here in our American West. It's true. Yeah, they're still suffering those consequences of these beings who want to do experiments. And in in many ways, we are. We're a little bit of uh, on a on a petri dish for a, a while. I mean, 
if they can run experiments on us, if we put ourselves out there and make ourselves vulnerable to that system and needing that system, they're going to run experiments on us because to them, we're giving them per permission. And before I go into this article, so you might say, <clears throat> what hope do we have then if, if they have that type of technology? Well, if the real controllers show up and start to, you know, exert and flex their muscles and their technology, then there are benevolent ones that because the w real controllers have kind of overstepped the treaty, uh, then these guys can step in. And there are some that are, you know, biting at the bit, waiting to help humanity. And thus we will be back into the time of the wars of the gods over our heads again. You know, one of the biggest keys is we we have to take care of ourselves. We, it, in so many ways, it is up to us. It's our consciousness. Do we want help? You can't just sit there and ask for help and expect something to happen. You have to get up and help yourself. And when they see that recognition, they respond to that recognition. And this is all Cindy. Oh my gosh, you know, here's my thing lately. I, I Raw cow milk, it is so, so good for you. If you're someone who has leaky gut, if you're someone who's taken a lot of antibiotics and your, your gut is just totally trashed, if you're lactose intolerant, um, raw cow milk, raw cow milk. Also, hormones. This raw cow milk, you know, that really yummy thick layer of cream on the top, that type of fat, the type of animal fat that you see here can help pull your hormones into balance. It can heal your leaky gut. It can give you the nutrients that you need 100%. And it is so hard to get raw cow milk where I'm at. And I know a lot of other places too. It's not super easy. It, they've just really taken that off the shelf. So anybody who's lactose intolerant, if you're not able to drink the milk from the store, it's because they've pasteurized it and they've killed all the beneficial enzymes that allow you to absorb all the nutrients that your body needs, all the calcium, magnesium. I mean, cow milk is like so, so good for you, but they've made it very difficult for people to ingest unfortunately absolutely and i think they really showed their hand on this one but they've done it before too because for so many years cbd was an illegal thing and yet human bodies have cbd receptors we were using it as a tool for forever our bodies have adapted to its use or even have always had that as an effective um control against pain and inflammation and and good for so many things the same thing with the raw cow milk um, the pasteurization they'll say raw milk is dangerous well what's dangerous for you is the is it's pretty much anything that you're going to walk into a, a cvs a walgreens or a walmart pharmacy and they're so dangerous that they even have to tell you and most of these things will tell you things like can cause all sorts of things including cancer and death uh why why in the world would they not want us having something that could actually heal our gut how many people have leaky gut how many people have irritable bowel syndrome how many people have all sorts of issues going on diverticulitis i mean it seems like the majority of humans have some sort of thyroid issue yeah thyroid hmm Thyroid, radiation, radiation, thyroid, cell phones, Wi-Fi, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Low dose, low doses build up. And so we're being slowly roasted, slowly toxified. Of course, you're going to have uh, cancer and all sorts of heart disease running rampant when you have the system in place that we have. And I'm um, so glad to see that so many people are waking up to that but there's still so much more to do you know it's it's been a long journey for me stepping out of the western medical system it definitely has not been easy at all and there's been a lot of times where i've been in so much pain i mean just crying at night poor mike he has to put up with it or work on me so that i feel better but i have been in serious pain 
And you know what I allowed that pain to do for me is drive me even harder to find a solution for my problem other than going to the Western medical system because I know exactly what they're going to do. They're not going to fix the problem. They're going to put a Band-Aid on it. They're going to give me a temporary uh, fix. And all the while, while this temporary fix is going on, my body is still in the background screaming for help. Those those background processes are still needing to be adjusted so the more you cover that up the worse it's gonna get so I mean it took a lot it took years for me to be in pain and I I still go through stuff I mean the pain is a lot less but I let it guide me I let it force my butt to figure out what is wrong and that's just the way I do it everybody has 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 a way but you do have to step up and, and, and be responsible for what you put in your body and be responsible for how you are going to fix things because we have choices. I mean, they're not always easy, but they're there. And we have this. Look at this. What does this say? Human cells have a resonant frequency and it's just barely audible. Like a tuning fork, living human cells have frequencies at which they naturally vibrate, and now we have estimates for what some of them are. Well, again, so much has been given to us out of the Hindu tradition, out of yoga. Uh, we understand there's a sound to creation, and it's Om, and we understand the human resonance, and the earth has a frequency, which is ascending. We all have frequencies that we will be harmonious with and that are incongruous to our health and well-being and the reality is again if you are sitting in the middle of manhattan la chicago houston miami any of these places you're being blasted with frequencies that are not compatible with with good health in the human body that's that's just the that's the bottom line and you know we have to make a decision because i i do think people We'll try to toe that line because there's things about this. Um, there's things about our modern society that people love. And okay, I love I love you know guitar amplification. I do. Um, there are there are things that we we like. I mean, we we do like watching uh, travel shows and things like that. Yeah, and we love historical shows. I mean, I I do love for as much as I get irritated by it. I love YouTube because. You know, immediately you can see things and and you don't have to go running to the library like I had to do as a kid. I, I remember renting a projector and renting movies and bringing it home and putting it on a screen. I mean, man, you know, life is so different. Information is so readily available to us. Yet at the same time, where, where are we going? We're going to a place where I would say absolutely people that are born now or young kids right now if they stay free of all the toxins if they stay free of all the control system tools and frequencies they'll be able to sit down and go into a meditative state and easily access the akashic records uh, because the akashic records are real and right now many of our family members can do that we we meet with dozens of people every single week and do spiritual coaching energy work and cindy does use her tuning forks to help restore people's resonant frequency back into a, a harmonious pattern that is in synchronization with the earth and the higher frequencies because as we're exposed to all the lower frequencies uh, they distort and change our frequency and pull us down in vibration this is real and this is something that even a mainstream uh, magazine like new scientist is covering here they can't hold it back anymore they just can't hold back all the knowledge so they're going to admit to things but then they're always going to try to twist us over to their technology I mean, shoot, they'll probably say, why don't you go get an implant so you could just adjust your own frequency? You know, I'm sure Elon will come up with that. But the reality is, you know, we can do the same. Shamans have been doing, doing the same for, for thousands of years, going well back into the other ages. Uh, what we're realizing is the real healing sciences involve sound and, and involve frequencies, whether they're 
utilizing small tools like what Dr. Dr. Holda Clark talks about um, with making your own little zapper. Um, but then we could look to others that have made you know similar items to restore our frequencies uh, in our bodies. But I do think the same thing can be simply done with doing mantras, doing Vedic mantras. When you're doing Vedic mantras, you're intoning a particular frequency that is given to us in the golden and silver ages and that will start to pull those higher frequencies into our bodies they could change us in just a matter of moments they could restore a higher frequency and so yes great to go to your acupuncturist great to get energy work done from somebody that understands energy work whether it's uh, Qigong, uh, Reiki, you know, Cindy and I are both Reiki master teachers, We've both been practicing Qigong uh, for decades, as well as studied other things, uh, polarity therapy, pranic healing. I mean, it goes on and on. You know, this is this is who we are. We are energy workers. And yet we don't really try to advertise it because, you know, we, we kind of have almost all we could handle as far as work goes. But we will um, take on people as as we're able to and, and as, you know, openings come, uh, which, again, you know, we don't mention it all the time because we're busy. And this is what we do when we're not doing videos. And yet we feel that we need we need and have a responsibility to teach at the same time. Um, so we'll go in more depth in, in future videos. Uh, teaching a little bit more of the intricacies of, of the energy work, which really uh, the, the exciting part is that we're going to be able to all start connecting to our higher selves and start pulling skills from past lives into the present life in, in the era that's coming ahead. So it's not all doom and gloom. In fact, the, the reality is that, you know, the dawn is, is out there and it just depends on where you're at. If you're on top of a mountain, you could see the sun's rising. If you're down in a dark, dark, you know, valley or city somewhere and you can't see it because of all the frequencies that are around you, you might feel there's no hope. But there is hope. In fact, it, it's inevitable. The longer that we can maintain our originality uh, as far as the original program given to us by the true creator of this universe then the sky's the limit because people will be living hundreds of years in in the near future and yet those that are in this in the cell cities they're probably only going to be living like Logan's run maybe 30 years and and they're out of there 30 40 years there's a real divergent path ahead very very divergent it's up to each one of us to make that choice you know the the inorganic frequencies you can really tell because i mean it feels like nails on a chalkboard if something is not um <clears throat> resonating with you in your life you're gonna feel it you're gonna feel the pressure you're gonna feel the annoyance you're going to feel the need to go in a different direction. And, and I really want people to learn to hone in and start feeling that. I mean, sometimes you're called to a challenge, but other times you're called to avoid this thing. And there is a difference. There's definitely a difference in the two. So uh, sitting with your own frequency, uh, silent meditation I like, but I've also seen people really do so well with the mantras um, just bring themselves up and up and up and that does help repattern repattern the body so if you're in a bad spot mantras can usually bring you back in and we like to teach people how to care for themselves <clears throat> and repattern themselves because I, I guess that's what teachers do you just you just show people how to do what you do because sure Mike and I we go through challenges we get thrown off our center we have to deal with things that we don't like but well, we keep circling back to the same thing, you know, the mantras, the meditation. And that's how it goes because life can be hard. And and no matter what position you're at in life, life can be hard. And that's just kind of the way it is. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, a lot of times when we first work on somebody, um, that's when it's the toughest because a lot of times people really have these dark demonic attachments to them. And so it can affect us and sometimes it'll throw us for a loop, you know, like a few weeks ago we had one 
and I was feeling really, really good and, you know, had a whole big day scheduled. But then after this one person, the energy blasted us so much that we're pretty much, you know, having to just do mantras, meditation and, you know, our own Qigong practice to clear that energy out. So we didn't get anything else done the rest of the day. And that's just the way it is when you're healers. Um, again, we do clear dark demonic energies all the time. And we have been doing that for a long time. And it, it, it it's something, again, you don't have to use uh, just the name Jesus Christ. No, uh, we don't. We often don't use any names at all. We just simply use the tuning forks in our intent. Um, and there's times when we've called on the energies of the archangels. We always call on the energies of the devas to um, on a daily basis to uh, help clear us and, and definitely remove any residue. Um, but saging and just a simple intention uh, behind the saging. So, you know, just lighting a smudge stick, going around the room in a circle will do it. And just say straight out, get out of here. Any negative frequencies, any negative beings and entities, you're not allowed here. You're not welcome here. Leave. Just that simple. They will leave and, and they have to because source is in you. So you are speaking with authority and this is where they want to take your power away from you. And this is how they do take your power away from you, from getting you to think uh, if you do believe in, you know, some of the traditional um, dogma out there that you're a worthless sinner and that you have no power in and of yourself. Well, <laughs> then you're just pray for the system. You do have power for yourself. I've, I've seen with my own eyes visibly dark demonic entities and I've pointed at them and told them to get the bleep out of here and they leave because source is in us and you just have to realize that you have tremendous power inside of you and this is why also we don't open up the door by any sort of um, we don't use any sort of mind altering chemicals so, you know, we use no substances uh, not even a light beer and this is because we always have to be on guard personally. Oh, right. You know, and when we do work on people, I think it's just important to note that, yes, I mean, we can do the energy work. The person is going to feel better. They're going to be on a healing track and whatever. I mean, most people have entities, so that's just not a big deal. I don't want anybody to freak out about that. It's just the way it is. I mean, if you walk through a mall and suddenly you're in a bad mood, well, you know, something probably latched onto you. And and I don't want people to be afraid. I think I just want that fear gone because it's sort of like going through the forest, a tick drops on you. It is what it is. You get rid of it, you know? Right. Yeah. It, you know, if you walk through a forest, you spend time out in the woods hiking, chances are you're going to have either a tick on you, you're going to be bit by a mosquito, there might be a, a fly that keeps landing on your head. Um, it could be all sorts of things. It might just be ants, you know, hopefully they're not fire ants. This, this is <laughs> the reality with the astral world right, these right. these things are all around us all the time there's never a time when you're ever alone you're never alone never there's always beings around you mm -hmm. and you know some of them are worse than others but you can't clear the entirety of them away but you have to kind of constantly be doing you gotta it Gotta keep up on it you have to keep up on it and you also have to follow the way of healing like what direction is your higher self pointing you in because if you don't work on the healing, then it just opens the door for them. If you go back to the same things that you were doing, that door gets opened again. Just like if you go out, you know, you clean yourself up from being out in the forest to go back out, you're probably going to get something. So you want to come back and clear it out. So I just, I guess I kind of want to normalize it. I don't want anybody afraid that, oh, I have attachments. We, we, we all get them. It happens, you know, just how quickly do you clean yourself up and how quickly do you grab your center again is, I think, is what helps. Yeah, and it's a blessing that Cindy and I have each other because, you know, I'll say to her after that last person, all of a sudden I feel like I'm getting a headache and she'll check and, oh, your crown chakra shut down. Right. And so, you know, she will clear me. There, Then times I'll clear her. We're, we're always clearing each other. And, and so we're a team and it's a blessing that we have each other. And I wouldn't want to spend one single day on this planet without her. <laughs> ditto, ditto, ditto. 
So I hope this has resonated with you guys. And I saw comments when we last did the tuning forks. Um, somebody's, uh, there was a couple that said, what was that, the end? Because I was tingling all over. So that's wonderful. And Cindy's got a tuning fork out right now. And she's going to do a ding so we can clear uh, any sort of dark attachments. And we'll give you something really cute to look at as we do this. Just put the intent out there as we do this. And you might want to even say, you know, my intention is that I am clearing all the space around me in my house, my apartment, this property, all negative ener energies, all negative entities must leave and have that uh, as your intent. And at the same time, you can also visualize pure white light coming down from a uh, source from the heavens and in encircling you protecting you and also raising up your frequencies and Cindy will do a tuning for okay. us. Okay, stand by. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That'll give you a very nice clearing. Please drink lots of water and get some rest. It's definitely going to help you. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.